So today I will be eliminating an annoyance that I've had in my diagnostic uh, tool case for, for over a year now, and that uh, about a year. Um, this here Klein MM400 multimeter. Um, nothing wrong with this meter if you're doing AC work. I, I can't really see how you'd go wrong with this thing. The problem is, is that the majority of the work I do is DC and it is a auto ranging meter we'll get into why that gets on my nerves um, a little bit later on in the video when we look down on the thing but um yeah I bought this thing I, I originally I, for years and years and years I had a uh, blue point meter that I bought off the old snap-on truck um, probably 10 15 years ago and um, I, th I believe it was even a it was a rebranded fluke and it was a good meter I liked it I, I said I used it for years um, at some point in time one of the uh, segments in the old LED there started started glitching out on me so it was time to replace it and that's when I, I picked this guy up and um, I always like Klein tools you guys know that I've, I've done a few videos on their stuff and um, yeah, like I said, I've always liked their stuff, so I just grabbed this real quick and didn't even think to to look into it. I mean, re reason is, is meters are meters nowadays. Back in the day, to get anything uh, precise, you had to spend a little extra money with the with the flukes and the green leaves and everything like that. Um, now today, the, the chips and the components that go inside these things to make a meter accurate enough for diagnostic use they're cheap as beans it doesn't i mean as far as accuracy goes you're not really going to find too much i mean unless you're going into like really high tech stuff but i mean for 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 day-to-day -day technician use pretty much any meter is going to uh do you well even like the the ones they used to give away at harbor freight for like a like a dollar um but where, where your money is actually spent and that's why i always say when people ask me what kind of meter to get i just say get a brand name one um this is your best bet and that's that's because the cat rating on these a lot of the chinese meters uh they'll, they'll just put a cat rating on the thing just because they're supposed to but um yeah the cat rating is basically is what keeps this thing from blowing up in your face if you're using it correctly uh both both meters that i'm looking at today are both cat cat three meters which i believe without looking it up i think it's um up to tra transient voltages up to six thousand volts to three thousand amps i think they're they're okay for so if you plug this thing in um within its rating which this part i think this 600 volts yeah cat 3 600 volts if you plug this in within its rating uh you get a transient voltages on on the circuit there and um what will happen is is that this thing will literally blow up in your face and you'll have a big uh, plasma discharge and yeah it's not a pretty sight when you when you put the wrong meter on the wrong circuit so that's basically what you're paying for a brand name will be less likely to fake a cat rating as compared to some just cheap knockoff chinesium one uh for me personally i, I really don't get into too much as far as ac voltage goes uh, occasionally i mean aside from around the house stuff occasionally i'll have a battery charger that's glitching out to help the customer out i'll pop the thing open and the most i've ever seen a battery charger uh in the field work on would be 483 phase so i mean i'll you know open it up kind of poke around check voltages you know check fuses if it's fuses pick up another fuse for the guy just to get them going if it's anything more than that i call it the charger company I mean, just stay within your lane is, is where i go but um to replace this one, um, and this time I actually kind of did a little bit of thinking before I just ran out and bought the first one I saw, I got another Klein meter. <laughs> like I said, not wrong with this meter, it's just not suiting my, my, my cable uh, for, for what I need. Um, suitable for what I need, I guess I should say. Um, and this would be the MM300 meter. And the biggest difference with this one is that it is not auto-ranging, which is my complaint with this one. Um, when I was digging around, I just kind of found uh, what I would consider as a banger deal. And um, yeah, this particular kit comes with the MM300, a outlet tester, which I could use in my day-to-day -day when I'm looking for an outlet to use it at a... Um, uh, warehouse or what have you um, plug this in without having to bust a meter out and look for leads and we'll, we'll get into this and uh, the old um, non-contact chicken stick voltage detector here um, also included in that package was this Klein IR uh, thermometer heat gun and this this whole deal was 60 bucks i'm like you can't you can't beat that with a stick so so i bought that and uh, yeah 
So let's take a look down in the camera and I'll kind of get a little deeper into why this thing annoys me. And um, we'll take a look at this guy. Uh, we'll get into the beater and the rest of the stuff we'll just kind of give a quick look at out of the package. And uh, yeah, that'll be the video. So uh, let's do that. So let's start off with the old um, meter that I've been using for, for a long time, which is the MM400. Uh, as you can tell, it's got some dirt on it. Uh, I actually use my tools on like a certain Subaru mechanic who likes to criticize real mechanics on the internet. Um, this particular one, like I said, for an AC guy, I can't see how you'd go wrong with this thing. Um, my, my personal gripes with it would be the, the auto ranging feature, which I know I don't, I knew I didn't like when I bought this, but I wasn't thinking when I bought it. And, um, basically what, what it comes down to is, okay, so I'm, I'm doing a diagnostics and when you're doing diagnostics on, on anything, you, you really need to keep, well, I like to keep my, my cognitive load, uh, as minimal as possible because, you know, you got pin 27, uh, on plug 034 and you got pin 22 on plug 0. 23 and you're trying to do the continuity test or you're checking voltage between them you you, you, you want to keep you know your brain in, engaged into the problem at hand not not so much into worrying about what settings your meters is on and that's where the problem lies with this one um i actually before i get into showing you i had a problem the other day i was working on a 36 volt forklift and this meter was you know three four feet away from me with this little lcd screen and i'm looking for 36 volts and i'm plugging around and i forgot to set the meter right and i'm seeing 27 volts and i'm like where the hell is this 27 volts coming from and it was actually 27 millivolts because it was auto range and it was just picking up some transient voltage that was inside the it, it drove me nuts and that was actually the last straw for for this meter because it just it, it annoys the hell out of me but um yeah so i mean the typical situation you know i'm coming over here I'm checking voltage, so I got to turn it on to voltage, and then I got to select the range, which I mean, select the voltage to DC, so that's one, two motions, and then I got to come over here to range to take it off of auto range, and then set it to the range that I'm testing, and it's just like, okay, so that's not that big of a deal to do it once, but you know, you're checking voltage and continuity most of the time, or resistance, so now I got to go to, over to here to resistance, and it, actually, it's not resistance. Yeah, it is. So I go over here to resistance and I'm checking for resistance and then I got to go back to voltage to check voltage on something else, which and then I have to go this and then I have to go this and this and this and then you, you're getting a picture. It's just it's a lot of extra work just for for going back and forth between between uh, tests there. But all in all, like I said, it's, it's not a bad meter. It's just not for me um, on the front here which the new one doesn't have and this one it really doesn't really do much anyway but it does have a little backlit led which looks a hell of a lot better than it does in a warehouse when this thing is four feet away from you you can trust me on that so this thing really doesn't help me out too much as far as the light goes so that's not a deal breaker or maker for me um little kickstand which kind of helps it sit up in front of you you can also take the kickstand and hook it onto something if you're if you're got a place to hook it uh be honest with you it just seems like that kickstand is never never in the angle that it needs to be it's just something with these meters i mean even my old my old blue point meter kind of had the same issues so here's the two meters side by side uh we're going to drop the fourth wall for a second here and i'm going to re-record the meter section of this video uh, i'm editing it and i'm just like wow this is getting too long um just kind of went too deep into how this thing works we'll assume that people know how to use these meters if not i could always come back and do another video on how to use a multimeter but we're just going to kind of gloss over the features of this particular one i i, I got a rule i make videos as long as they need to be or, and, and as short as I can make them and that was not as short as I can make this video so <laughs> that's that now going side by side I mean you can pretty much see that they're basically the same exact case that you got going on here less these buttons that uh that we were talking about this one does have a hold feature which again I mean it's nice if you can't see the meter while you're probing you can hit the hold button when you get your connection and and, and check your uh reading on the meter there but yeah i mean basically you're looking at 
pretty much the same exact meter aside from the faces, same same kickstand, same everything there. Now what actually comes with the meter, aside from the batteries that you have to plug into the back of it, uh, you get these here leads. Uh, th these leads are nice enough, they kind of have a, a silicone feel to them, they're not like those cheap PVC leads that you get some uh, off of Amazon and eBay occasionally that are that are just junk. Uh, I will say I like this kind of cap thing. The old meter had the same same leads too, by the way. But uh, yeah, these these here um, positive and negative leads. You can take these off. So if you're probing in something tight, you know you got a positive here and a ground here. And you don't want to arc out your meters. You could uh, take this here, and um, yeah, kind of adds a little bit of insulation there for when you're probing in tight areas. Now, one thing I will add, which in my personal opinion is a must for any multimeter, um, is alligator clip style uh, leads. Um, they do sell the multi style jobbies where you can plug in different ends to the things. Personally, especially with the big alligator clips like these, if you're working on an engine, you got the alligator clip on the thing and the wa uh, wires wobble in there, it just, the wire just ends up falling off and it's annoying so I, I personally like the ones that are permanently attached and I just swap them out when I need them um, I do mention at the end of the video that with these particular ones it's a good idea to kind of cut back this insulation here on the um, on the ends that actually go into the meter um, at the end of the video I didn't do it yet but yeah with, with these ones for some reason I think a lot of these are just made for flukes and uh, these just don't go in as deep as you, you want them to on the meter when uh when you plug them in and you just don't get as good as contact sometimes you gotta give them a wiggle but yeah once you cut that off of uh the end there uh, it gives you gives you a better connection and a, a more assured connection and again with the alligator clips they're you know these are nice and nice and tight and um yeah so getting into the actual boy this meter uh works uh compared to the other one uh basically and this is where the frustration of this this old meter will be leaving me. Um, I'm working on a DC 12 volt uh, forklift, so I'm over here checking voltage, um, and no other buttons need to be push, pushed to get to the settings that I need to. And then I come over here to the the ohm scale, and I can check resistance and just kind of go back and forth without having to push a whole bunch of other buttons, which is the reason why I think this will be <laughs> be better for me so let's walk work our way around the dial and we'll figure out what this thing actually is as far as as far as ranging goes um, we'll go counterclockwise and work our way around it seems to be the most relevant to me uh, starting off at 600 volts uh, scale all the way down to 200 millivolt scale and for my typical application, I would be on the 20 volt scale if I'm working on a IC truck with a 12 volt battery system in there. I'm hooked up to my uh, power supply over there, but uh, yeah, you kind of got the readout there. And with the dial here with the voltage, make it kind of go up and down. And it is reflecting fairly well what I'm doing with my hand over here on the knob. So the actual meter itself has some uh, pretty nice resolution there. Now, going over to the resistance scale, we go from uh, 200 all the way down to 2 mega ohms. Now, I got this little potentiometer right here. Actually, my daughter was making a uh, uh, guitar in her uh, high school STEM class, and she needed to do a lot of soldering, so I figured I'd teach her how to do it the right way before I sent her off to school. And uh, I might mention, uh, she... Uh, did a pretty good job there, but anyway, enough dad bragging aside. Uh, we gotta hook up this little adjustable potentiometer here, and you just kind of twist it. There you go, and as you twist it, makes the changes on the meter. Not bad. Now moving over to the next scale 1.5 is the battery scale which would be like for your just your consumer batteries double A's triple A's 9 volts and you got a 1.5 and a 9 volt 
I kind of think they just had two extra spaces on the meter there, so they threw that in there because, I mean, DC voltage is going to do the same exact thing. Now, switching over to the amp scale, we go from 10 amps, as high as it'll go. If you exceed that, there's a fuse inside here that you'll have to take this apart and replace, and it probably cost about a quarter of what this meter costs. So, yeah, don't do that. Um, all the way down to... 200 microamps. Um, microamps is indicated by this here little, looks like a U with a line going in front of it. And um, yeah, I mean, anything from 200 microamps up to 200 milliamps, you keep it on this side. And if you're coming over to the 10 amp scale, you got to switch it over here. And that's when you're getting into the danger zone as far as cooking that fuse. But um, yeah, for the most part, I mean, I'm working on the 10 amp scale because it's not really... Not really too much as far as the the, the, the lower amp scales that I, I run into on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, continuing around the dial, you got yourself the old diode and the continuity check. Um, diode check you would have with the diode like this. You got power going through it one way, no power going through it the other way. And then the continuity check gives you continuity with resistance. It'll display on here and you get a beep when you get continuity kind of like this. gives you a little bit of an audio indication there and last but not least ac again probably the least thing i'll use and there's only two scales for it you got your 200 scale which i mean would be basically your wall outlet in your house and it goes all the way up to the 600 scale which we discussed earlier again for me 483 phase is the most i'll ever see but um yeah that's about it for the meter that was a lot quicker and um let's continue on and one last thing that I forgot before we actually do move on is um, this is how it kind of looks when you when you wrap it all up. You put your two leads in down here, and then you just give it a give it a wrap, and then the uh, leads plug into the back here, holds everything nice nice and secure. It's one of the things I did like about the other one was the way these uh, leads store up. Just be careful when you're wrapping these not to put too much torque on these these here leads because I mean wires don't like to be torqued like that. But yeah, you wrap it up like that, and then. You get your uh, your tack tote bag, which I had for a couple of years now, and yeah, a little nice, nice compact setup there. Stick your extra leads in there. Got magnets. Stick it on the end of the uh, tool bag there. And you're ready to rock and roll. Now this is the outlet tester. Let's kind of give a little bit of a zoom in here. There we go. As you can see here, now <clears throat> basically this is just kind of a quick and dirty way to plug into an outlet. One, make sure you got power out the outlet, out of the outlet, I should say, and it just kind of lets you know which if if the wiring is correct on it. Uh, if you get a orange light in the middle, you got an open ground, which means the outlet isn't ground, which is probably the most common thing you're going to see. Uh, if you have a orange light just right here, you got an open neutral, which again means your neutral isn't hooked up. Uh, nothing, which means open hot, obviously. And um, red, if you have a red and an orange on either side here, that indicates that you have a hot ground reverse, which is kind of a neat way to wire up a, an outlet there. And if you have red and orange hooked up here, we got ourselves a neutral and hot reverse, which is another common thing you're going to see. And um, uh, nothing on red and the two oranges means that your outlet is wired correctly. Uh, this kind of stuff, it's it's important, one, because the safety insulation on, on the, the, the items that you would plug into your outlet uh, depend on them being wired correctly. So, and a lot of, lot of uh, home inspectors will have one of these and just plug them into all the outlets just to make sure all your outlets, a good home inspector, will do that just to make sure all your outlets are, are safe to use. So, I got the old extension cord here, and hopefully my outlet is wired up correctly. And, uh, well, yeah, there you go. Got the orange, two oranges, which means it's it's wired up, no reds. Now I'm kind of digging that. Uh, and before we move on, uh, I forgot to mention this is a model number RT05. Now, moving on to the um, no contact 
voltage tester. This particular one is rated at a Cat 4, 1,000 volts, because you're not actually touching anything. It's pretty easy to have a high Cat rating if you're not actually touching anything, oddly enough. But, uh, yeah, so I just plug this one. I'll just plug the batteries into this thing, and I'm um, pretty sure you kind of just turn that on. Nice, nice beep to indicate it's on. I do like having a green indicator light that it is on so you know that it's powered and you're actually testing something. The one I have sitting somewhere is in a toolbox in my house somewhere. It doesn't give you an indication that it's on, which could be unfortunate because you could test something and it not have power. <laughs> well, you think it doesn't have power, but your meter's just not on. So, this thing kind of works like this, I'm assuming. And you get a visual and a um, audible warning that it's on, which is also nice because if you're close enough to the circuit breaker, you can plug plug this thing in, and when you hit the right circuit breaker, it'll you won't hear it anymore. Now this is the neutral. I shouldn't get anything on that, which I don't. And of course, with the ground, I don't get anything on that. Um, on the wire, I should yeah. Yeah, when I actually touch the hot wire in the, in the cable here, I get an indicator that it has power. One thing I will mention about these uh, no-contact chicken sticks, um, they um, do that, which they're they're pretty good. I mean, they'll, they'll just pick up any voltage. It's not going to tell you whether or not it's, it's deadly voltage, I guess. But, yeah, static electricity, just by touching it sometimes... You get transient voltages in the circuit. It's not going to do it for me now. I guess I discharged all my static electricity. I'm kind of grounded here sitting at this bench. But, yeah, you can get these things just to kind of pop off without without there actually being any voltage, which would be a, a false a false positive. But the nice thing is is that they don't give you false negatives, which would be a big problem. So, And they, they basically work on um, uh, capacitive coupling, which is a whole other video in and of itself but um yeah this this seems good enough now getting into the ir gun that comes in this this handy dandy little kit here this is the klein oh, ir oh, i'm sorry ir1 i will say that i like the way klein uh puts makes model numbers for things ir1 you know it's an ir gun this would be a uh, ncv T-1, which is a non-contact voltage tester. Okay, we kind of like that. And then you got the RT, which is the receptacle tester. And the MM, which is a multimeter. How simple is that? Good on you, Klein, for making sense of things. So back to the discussion at hand before I went off that little tangent here. Uh, this particular one is good for minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit up to 752 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, which in my field, we call that fire. Um, Celsius minus 20 up to 400 degrees Celsius. So you can always tell what the tool was actually made for as far as where the even numbers are. So the 400 degrees Celsius makes me think that this <laughs> was initially made for, uh, for a metric system. Now, in the past... Um, I've had a quite a, quite a few well uh, a few IR uh, guns. Uh, this particular one, uh, excuse me, is a Blue Point that I got off the old Snap-on truck. Obviously, uh, this I got better part of two decades ago. It's perfectly fine. When this thing came out, it was when these type of things first started coming out, and um, yeah, it served me well over the years. Um, battery goes down in here. A nice little switch here for. Fahrenheit and Celsius, so you could kind of stick with the one you like. Um, no backlit LED there or LCD. Um, uh, screen's a little small for what you need, but I mean it's got the deal where you kind of push it, you can let go of it, and it'll hold the the temperature reading you get in case you can't qu quite see it. Um, yeah, no complaints with this one. Uh, if I did have a complaint with it, the LCD screen when it's really cold um, doesn't doesn't really work that well. It just kind of kind of changes changes very slow but aside from that i mean for for as how old as it is and when they when these like i said when these first were coming out this was this was some high-tech stuff before you needed a thermal couple for everything 
Now getting on to uh, one that I bought not not too recently ago, but recently enough, is this Sentec uh, one. Uh, this piece of crap I got from Harbor Freight. It, it's completely useless as far as I'm concerned. Um, I'm, I'm just being critical of it because I don't like it. But um, yeah, I mean it's it's got um, two AA batteries. It takes. It does have the laser pointer for when you're pointing at it and it defaults to celsius which i can talk in celsius but my my native tongue's english so i do the thing i look at it like ah crap that looks low oh darn i'm on celsius let me try that again and one thing i've noticed with this thing i don't know if it's the ir sensors got to warm up but this thing will be off um by 20 degrees sometimes when you when you first use it and then like seems like after you use it for a few seconds it actually gets back not a few seconds but like 30 seconds whatever it is warms up and then all of a sudden it, it starts becoming accurate again but um yeah i wouldn't recommend this i'm not sure what i paid for it but whatever it was 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 too much because it's it's junk now i just use it for in the kitchen where things don't matter as much and if i mess up it doesn't cost as much now getting back to what we're actually here to see and that's the new thing and that is the Klein um, IR detector this particular one is a 10 to 1 ratio as far as the um, the circle or beam that you're going to be testing at so uh, at 10 feet you're going to have a one foot circle that it's going to be looking at and it'll just average out what's ever in there so you kind of got to keep that in mind if you're pointing at a you know, a, um, an exhaust vent for an air conditioner and you're 10 feet away from it, you're going to be looking at the exhaust vent and the wall behind it. You're not going to get that much, that accurate of a reading. Whereas to like, if you're 10 inches away, you're going to get a one inch circle. Keep that in mind when you're using one of these things. Um, this particular one has the laser pointer, which is fun for keeping, keeping the cat entertained. Uh, a very nice LCD display. Uh, when you put the battery in, I did that off camera, it takes a 9 volt battery which they give you with it, but there's a little switch in there for switching between Celsius and Fahrenheit. Like I said, I, I'm mostly working in Fahrenheit here in the old states. But um, yeah, I mean you can see it really good on the camera there too. It's got a, um, a really easy to read display. Let go of it, it holds the last reading just like the other ones, and you can read it in the LCD display, stays there for a couple of seconds, uh, a couple of long seconds, there you go, and <laughs> it'll eventually shut off. Now, what I would generally use this on a day-to-day -day basis, I mean, obviously would be like like uh, cooling systems on um, internal combustion trucks, making sure, you know, the radiator isn't clogged, making sure the um, the input of the radiator is cooler than the output, so you got flow and your water pumps working. Uh, also, just just in general, um, uh, thermal differentials between components is also a good indicator of something being wrong with something. So you know something's hot and something's cold, and they're both doing the same thing. You kind of know that there's a problem there. So yeah, these are good handy tools to have. Um, I did forget to mention when I was first look at this thing it comes with this here little Klein holster that you could stick this Bamba Janda in and uh, keep it from getting ugly but um, yeah in the hand I kind of like this thing it's got a nice feel to it well that is it for the Klein Amazon package that that I found with all this stuff in it and um, I actually turned the microphone on so you can hear me this time but um yeah so i just looked up the price as i was switching the cameras around and um yeah 65 dollars for all this stuff a multimeter um, ir gun uh chicken stick and an outlet tester i don't i don't see how you could beat that for for all this stuff from from a brand name company uh i, I definitely approve of this um like i said klein klein makes nice stuff i mean you could argue if it's top of the line, I wouldn't say it's top of the line, but it, it's good enough for, for what I need. Uh, I will set up a, see if I can find the link for these. I know I bought them off of Amazon, but uh, like I said, I will put a link on them. Um, you might have to, these little, get my eyeballs out of there. This little collar here, you might have to trim that back a little bit to get it to go into the meter and get good contact on it. But yeah, aside from that, these are nice. Um, like I said, I don't like the, the plug-in style 
if I gotta have something alligator clipped on, I just get these things out. It just saves a lot of headache. But um, yeah, and I know I know a lot of guys they, their their eyes kind of roll back in the back of their head when I start talking about electronic diagnostic tools, and yeah, I'm gonna have to be brutally honest here at this in this day and age, um, you, you gotta be able to do this stuff. A lot I hear all the time people saying I'm not an electric guy. It's like well, what the hell are you? Because if you're not an electric guy in this day and age, you're just a parts hanger, and. I mean, what are, you, what are you going to do with that? I mean, this everything has computers in it nowadays. Everything has a uh, very complicated electric, electronic circuits in them, and you need to be able to fix that to be a technician. It doesn't matter if you're working on forklifts, if you're working on cars, HVACs, it doesn't matter. It's all complicated nowadays, and that's why we make more than our fathers did uh, being technicians, because you got to know more stuff nowadays. And, um, yeah, so, like I said, the reason most people, I've said this before in a different video, the most people don't like dealing with electronics is because they're not comfortable with it because they never did it. And the more you do it, the more you look up those schematics and the more you look up those pins for doing pinouts and harnesses, the more comfortable you get with it, and then it's just, you know, whatever. I mean, me personally, I... I the mundane day-to-day -day stuff where I'm just hanging parts is kind of boring and then every once in a while the boss will call me up and say hey I got three guys got 40 hours into this machine they still can't get it running they replaced the computer and the sensor and the thing still doesn't work can you come in and take a look at it at the shop it kind of gets me excited because then it's something challenging and uh, yeah it's just how I am but yeah this stuff's important to learn especially if you're gonna call yourself a technician lecture aside um, yeah, I'll, like I said, I'll put links down in the uh, the old description there for this stuff. Any comments or concerns or, or anything, just drop them down in the old comments section. I'll do my best to get back to you. And, um, yeah, that's about it for this video. I'd like to thank you for watching. There you go.